This lecture is about hydrogen bonds. This is the third category of bonds that we talk about in this class. And hydrogen bonds are critical to your understanding of water chemistry. Since living organisms are mostly water, and a lot of living organisms live in water, it's going to be a really important concept to understand. We're also going to see hydrogen bonds in two other biologically significant molecules that we're going to talk about this semester. So we're going to see hydrogen bonds in water, which is what we'll be talking about in this lecture and in the coming lecture about properties of water. You'll also see hydrogen bonds in DNA and also in proteins. So you can see that these are really important bonds to understand. They do differ significantly from covalent bonds and ionic bonds. And in order to really understand how and why hydrogen bonds form, we have to take a little step back and just quickly review covalent bonds, specifically polar covalent bonds versus nonpolar covalent bonds. Remember that in polar covalent bonds, the electrons are not shared equally. And the reason they're not shared equally is because one of those atoms has a much higher electronegativity relative to the other. So let's look at the picture of that. First, let's look at who's electronegative and who isn't on the periodic table. Remember that that upper right corner of the periodic table where nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine live is the most electronegative part of the periodic table. So those elements have the highest pull on electrons, the strongest pull on electrons. So when they're sharing with something that's not the same level of electronegativity, they are not going to share equally. Equal sharing of electrons is called a nonpolar covalent bond. Hydrogen and hydrogen have the same exact electronegativity, so they're going to have the same pull on their shared electrons and therefore share them equally. Chlorine, on the other hand, is an electron hog. It's going to pull those electrons closer to it. It's not sharing equally with hydrogen that has a lower electronegativity relative to chlorine. Chlorine is not completely stealing those away like it does with sodium in ionic bonding, but they're still shared, just not equally. So let's write all that down as a reminder. So polar covalent bonds involves unequal sharing of electrons. And this is due to a difference in electronegativity between the two atoms. One of them has a much stronger pull on those shared electrons and therefore pulls those electrons closer, is not sharing them equally in that covalent bond. Nonpolar covalent bonds, on the other hand, are equal sharing of electrons. I'm just going to write equal sharing. And this is due to similar or the same electronegativity. So nonpolar covalent bonds, equal sharing, polar covalent bonds, unequal sharing. What does this have to do with hydrogen bonding? Well, let's look at water as our example. Remember that in a water molecule, which is H2O, meaning that it's two hydrogens bonded to one oxygen. This is a covalent bond, but more importantly, it's a polar covalent bond. Why is it a polar covalent bond? It's a polar covalent bond because oxygen is very electronegative relative to hydrogen. Because it's very electronegative, it has a really strong pull on those shared electrons, so they're not shared equally in that bond. If we drew the electrons as two dots, they would be orbiting closer to the oxygen and further away from the hydrogen. So something like this. Remember that electrons have a negative charge. 
So if something negative is spending more time around you, you're becoming a little more, more negative. And if something negative is orbiting further away from you, you're becoming a little more positive. And that's what happens in this water molecule. Because those electrons are spending more time with oxygen, orbiting closer to oxygen, oxygen is becoming a little bit negative. And it takes on what we call a partial negative charge. That is a lowercase delta symbol. I didn't do a very good job drawing that, but that is the Greek symbol for delta. Delta negative is a partial negative charge. It's not becoming an ion. It's still sharing those electrons. It didn't steal those electrons from hydrogen, but those negative subatomic particles are spending more time orbiting around oxygen, orbiting closer to oxygen. Oxygen is becoming a little bit negative. Hydrogen's got that negativity orbiting further away. Sorry, I'm on blur in the background. So <laughs> my hands disappear at some point. But because that negativity is orbiting further away from hydrogen, hydrogen actually becomes a little bit positive. So this is a partial positive charge. So now we have a partial charge difference within this water molecule. It was set up by electronegativity, by the fact that this is a polar covalent bond. They are not sharing electrons equally. Those electrons are spending more time with oxygen, orbiting closer to oxygen. Oxygen is becoming a little bit negative, And as a result, hydrogen is becoming a little bit positive. That is the key element to understanding how and why now hydrogen bonds are going to form. So let's draw several water molecules because you would almost never have just one water hanging out by himself, right? It's, you had a glass of water, you've got millions. If you had a, a lake, it's going to be an infinite number of water molecules. It's not really infinite, but it'd be more than we could count. So let's draw water. Now I'm going to draw that polar covalent bond. It's just a line because otherwise it's going to take us too long to draw all of this. Some of them can flip this direction. And now what's going to happen is all of these hydrogens are going to be partially positive and all of the oxygens are going to be partially negative. So let me just quickly go through and write that because this is a critical part of the story. I'll show you a better picture of that delta symbol in a minute. And then all of the oxygens are partially negative. And now neighboring water molecules are weakly attracted to each other. And this is what forms the hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond is going to be between water molecules. It's not what's holding the water together. The two hydrogens are bonded to that oxygen by polar covalent bonds. But if we look at this water and this water and this one and this one, they're all connected to each other by this partial charge difference attracting the opposite partial charge. So these are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are this weak attraction between the partial positive charge of hydrogen on one water and the partial negative charge of oxygen on another water molecule. In water, hydrogen bonds are what are called intermolecular bonds. Intermolecular means between molecules.
So inter means between molecules. They're not what's holding the water together. This is not a hydrogen bond. This is not a hydrogen bond. Those are polar covalent bonds. The hydrogen bonds are here. They're what's connecting those neighboring water molecules together. Let me show you a better picture of that. Sorry, I've got to scroll all the way up here. So you can see those hydrogen bonds in blue connecting neighboring water molecules. I told you that hydrogen bonds were also going to occur in water. I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I already just talked about water. Also going to occur in DNA and proteins. So let me just quickly show you this. We will talk about the structure of DNA and proteins in a lot more detail when we get to those macromolecules in lecture. But you can see in this picture of DNA, the two sides of the DNA are being held together by hydrogen bonds. And this is secondary protein structure, which is caused by hydrogen bonding between different amino acids that make up that protein. So you will see hydrogen bonds again, even after we finish water chemistry. Hydrogen bonds obviously always involve hydrogen. And then that hydrogen is going to have to be connected to something really electronegative, which in chemistry is usually hydrogen bonding with oxygen, hydrogen bonding with nitrogen. These are the two we're mostly going to see in biological molecules. Hydrogen can also bond with fluorine, and that's going to be another example. What is similar in all three of these examples is all of these are going to be polar covalent bonds because in every single case, all three of these, oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine, are very electronegative. So these are electronegative atoms bonded to hydrogen that is not that electronegative. So in every single one of these cases, these are going to be polar covalent bonds, unequal sharing of electrons. And in every case, those electronegative atoms are gonna pull those electrons closer. They're not going to share equally. And so in every single case, I wanna make sure I keep my colors consistent. The electronegative atom is going to become partially negative because it's pulling those negative subatomic particles closer to it. And because hydrogen is like letting some of that negativity go, it's orbiting further away from hydrogen. Hydrogen is going to become partially positive. And now these regions of that molecule where these bonds occur, where these polar covalent bonds occur, these regions are now going to be weakly attracted to other regions of a molecule, or neighboring molecules. And you can see, if you look at DNA again, you can see in that top hydrogen bond, the oxygen on one side is attracted to the hydrogen on the other. And then you can see the bond below that, the hydrogen is attracted to the nitrogen in another region. So that's what is going to make up the hydrogen bonds in DNA. And it's also going to be what makes up the hydrogen bonds and proteins. You can see the hydrogen bonding occurring between hydrogen and oxygen, hydrogen and nitrogen throughout these proteins. So those are hydrogen bonds. Again, we're going to talk about how hydrogen bonding contributes to some of the unique properties of water as we move through those lectures on properties of water.